What ASA is doing in my area is uh, virtually everything when it comes to uh, generating lift consciousness. Uh, working in a place with a, a pretty stark um, absence of any lift force. Uh, we've been at the forefront of struggles within the city for four years now for virtually the entirety of our existence, whether it be you know fighting to increase public transit, uh, fighting a very prolific anti-racial struggles, uh, leading marches. You know, uh, my branch, the West Seattle branch, is a newer branch, so uh, we've just been um, trying to grow our branch and expand, uh, you know, further into working class communities, trying to talk to people uh, and, and table in places where there isn't really a tradition of, uh, you know, activism like there maybe is in the city centers. Obviously, we have a lot of work to do. We're building a revolutionary organization in the cornerstone of world capitalism. Yeah, even in a place in Alabama that's like the reddest of red states, working in an area where there's uh, a very low tradition of struggle, you know, uh, the conditions that that tends to produce, uh, of course, that lack of struggle produces backward conditions that can, you know, ramp up struggle uh, when the right forces come along and, you know, have the right message that can galvanize the working class. I mean, I think everyone knows about uh, Shaw Sawant, uh, we have a socialist, a member of Socialist Alternative elected to the City Council in Seattle, so that not only does it allow us to do work uh, just on a different level uh, than we can do in other cities, it opens us up to not just participate in sort of movements on the ground, but also to actively put forward legislation and sort of create demands and then organize movements around them. We're working to put forward legislation to help protect tenants against uh, you know, runaway rents and abuse by landlords, but also because of Shama's profile, we've grown tremendously in Seattle over the past couple of years. So we have seven branches now, uh, about 130 active members. There's a huge space for us to organize something that has a lot more political clarity and that really um, speaks directly to the reason why people are moving towards um, Bernie Sanders and are so excited about um, his campaign. So we had a rally, we, we got um, speakers from local movements um, who are also Bernie supporters. Uh, we had a, a short march, we ended at Citibank, we had a sort of mock um, a subpoena to release transcripts, you know, so it, it was good. Right now in Harlem we are a relatively new branch, but we are trying basically to get rooted in the, in, in the community. Right now we are intervening with the Bernie Sanders campaign, and then through the Bernie campaign basically we are just trying to, to bring all the, you know, forces uh, that are more in the left in the neighborhood and kind of be known in, in the neighborhood. One of the things that we are doing in this next like period, the next couple months, is what's called Party Building Summer, um, where we're going to be basically consolidating our like internal resources as a party. Um, we've had a lot of growth in the past period, and so now there's a phase where we need to like pump the brakes a little bit and take stock of like what's going on locally. Uh, building the socialist movement at a new community college, uh, Madison uh, Area Technical College, MATC. Uh, we've actually established a student group there and have uh, a number of members that are really active. Right now we are working on a campaign against a proposed football stadium at Temple University. We had a 15 now campaign in Philly and then we started one about a year and a half ago at Temple to try to get Temple to pay all of its workers at least $15 an hour. The administration was completely ignoring us and kind of giving us the message that there was no money. They didn't even really tell the students, but there was like an article in the newspaper about how they were planning to build a $100 million, 40,000 seat football stadium. And then eventually it got bumped up to $126 million. Philadelphia is the poorest major city in the country and our school is in between two of the poorest zip codes in the city. We called a public meeting and about 100 people showed up. Um, and that's how we started Stadium Stompers, which is sort of a coalition of students, community members, temple um, employees, a lot of adjunct professors who are fighting against the stadium and kind of addressing temple's crisis of priorities. Um, and SA has played a really big part in that.